so Iran, uh, I think, continues to be a threat to the United States in spite of what some libertarians would tell you. Uh, Iran uh, is still developing nuclear weapons and still interested in having nuclear weapons. It's still interested in being a nuclear power. Uh, the problem and what differentiates Iran from other nuclear powers is that Iran is a theocracy. It is a religious, fanatic, nutty place. And uh, you, cannot, you cannot trust a theocracy, particularly a theocracy that believes in you know, dying for Allah, you cannot trust such a theocracy with nuclear weapons because they might uh, be willing to engage in a suicidal action. I, I, I think the, probably the nuclear power in the world today that is most likely ultimately to use nuclear weapons is Pakistan for exactly that reason, for the reason that, that it, it could easily fall into the hands of Islamists or even existing uh, people within the Pakistani uh, power structure that will say dying, you know, taking out a billion Hindus is worth it, if we, even if it means a, a Pakistan is wiped out because we all go to heaven as a consequence. Uh, you cannot deal with that kind of irrationality, that kind of death wish, uh, that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, insanity. And it's enough that we have that in Pakistan. Uh, I, I wish there was a way to, um, to diffuse that threat, I, I hope. I don't believe, but I hope that the United States has plans to, um, uh, to somehow take over the Pakistani nuclear arsenal uh, if the time comes to have to do that. Maybe the Indians have a plan to do that. I don't know. But, uh, but it's certainly the case that uh, if we can prevent Iran from ever achieving nuclear uh, weapons, that should be a major goal of American foreign policy. Unfortunately, Nobody is really committed to that goal. Uh, while the Trump administration withdrew from the Iranian nuclear deal, which was the right thing to do, it didn't take the next step, which was to, you know, crush uh, all, uh, you know, all of the, the, the facilities and all of the, uh, the ability of the Iranians to engage in nuclear research and the development of nuclear weapons. Uh, the Israelis are continuously trying to do that. There was just yesterday or the day before yesterday, a big explosion not far from uh, one of the nuclear power plants in Iran. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the Israelis uh, destroying something, who knows what exactly, uh, related to the nuclear program in Iran. So the Israelis are doing what they can to prevent uh, the Iranians from developing nukes uh, with the help, I think, and one of the reasons why many of the Gulf states cut a deal with the Israelis uh, was because they all view Iran as a threat. Uh, so they, they probably are helping them with intelligence and helping them with other things. But it would be good to get to wipe this threat out once and for all, and either for the United States to give Israel a green light to take the Iranians out, or for the Americans just to do it. I, I, I think that, that, that I think overall, giving Israel a green light to do it is maybe safer for the United States, easier for the United States, less political difficult for the United States. But it doesn't look like the United States is willing to do that. Trump didn't do it. Uh, Obama certainly didn't do it. Bush didn't do it. Bush actually prevented the United States from doing anything, Israel from doing anything. And it certainly does not look like Biden is going to do it. So um, uh, Iran is emboldened by, again, the weakness of the United States. The whole world is emboldened by the weakness of the United States. As a consequence, uh, you know, uh, uh, Iran is um, is gone to the negotiating table with Biden, basically uh, telling them to shove it, and uh, they don't really care what the United States thinks. Uh, they're basically going to the United States with demands that they that the United States says cannot uh, give in to, the, to uh, basically delaying uh, any kind of agreement, and in the meantime, uh, developing their own. Uh, you know, I'm sure working to develop their own nuclear capability, so that the day will come where they'll say, "Well, all this negotiation is irrelevant." because we already have nukes, goodbye. Uh, the, um, if you add to that, right, um, if you add to that the fact that uh, Iran has uh, increased its global power, uh, it, not global power, its, its power in the Middle East dramatically uh, under Trump, uh, since, really since Bush through Trump, 9-11, uh, the invasion of Iraq and the invasion of Afghanistan have, have increased 
the, the power of our largest enemy, our most significant enemy in the Middle East, which is Iran. Iran today, uh, to a large extent, controls uh, Iraq, Syria, and uh, Lebanon. Much of that, particularly Syria and Lebanon, was achieved under, uh, under Trump. They also now control Yemen, uh, even though the Saudis are trying to push back against that. They've not been very successful. So they basically have... Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and Egypt on three fronts. Uh, they, they've got them surrounded. Uh, they, they are becoming a significant, uh, they, they're also a significant player in Afghanistan. With the United States leaving, they have a uh, real presence over there, um, real presence over there uh, in, in Afghanistan. So, so Iran has been a winner. On the other hand, Iran is very weak. Uh, they have uh, weak weapons technologies. Uh, the only reason uh, the, the only reason they have the kind of power they have is because they're fighting against enemies that are a lot weaker than them. And of course, it's because the United States won't defend itself and won't project its power over Iran. Iran is a, overall a very weak country, militarily and economically. Uh, Iran, like Russia, is completely dependent on natural resources. Right now, they're feeling strong and powerful because the price of oil is high. Uh, but when uh, energy prices decline, uh, they have a really hard time, and they got they got hit really hard by COVID. Uh, what surprises me, what continues to surprise me, is that we haven't seen an internal revolution in Iran. Uh, I don't understand it. I, the only explanation I can I have for that is the is the fact that um, the United States is not investing enough in the opposition in Iran and is not encouraging it to revolt against the regime um, or that uh, too much of the country is actually religious and supportive of this regime. But the fact is that at least within Tehran, I think uh, the regime is in the minority and there is a significant number of people within Tehran that would like to see the regime disappear. It is, uh, it's sad that there hasn't been an internal revolution um, in um, uh, in uh, internal revolution in the, uh, what do you call it, I, 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 in Iran. Uh, that, that would have been, that would have solved all our problems quite easily if, if Iran became a secular country. That would be pretty cool. I, I think we often tend to overestimate the degree to which countries are indeed secular. While the intelligentsia, the relative intelligentsia within Tehran might be, many of them have left Iran and uh, in the countryside, Iran is very, very, very religious and committed to this regime. Um, let's see, I, I saw some Tehran, Iran questions. Uh, does it matter whether or not Iran agrees to return the 2015 nuclear deal? Um, I mean, let's hope they don't, because I think the, the nuclear deal is a deal that actually allows the Iranians to, in the background, do all kinds of things. Uh, to develop their nukes, uh, it, it's, it's, it has very little verifiability in that treaty. So if, if there was a treaty, it would have to be, uh, if there was a deal, it would have to be a revised deal, which, which was a lot stricter on uh, the Iranians, and I don't think they'd agree to that. Uh, generally, I, I, I don't think that that agreement, I, I think that agreement was a betrayal of U.S. interests. I think that agreement was, was horrible. Uh, and it doesn't matter what, whether they agree or not to join it. What matters is, will they develop nuclear weapons and is the, uh, is the United States committed to preventing that and is the United States willing to use force in order to prevent it? That's, the, that's all that matters. The treaty is irrelevant. It's, 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 a, it's just a place for the Iranians to flex their muscles and to show the Americans the extent to which the Americans are actually paper tigers. Terrorism. I expect uh, to start seeing a rise in terrorism around the world, uh, primarily targeted at U.S. interests. I think that will come f uh, probably not in 2022, but in, I'd say, over the next five to 10 years. That will come to a large extent because of uh, the, the pathetic nature in which we fought in Afghanistan and the way in which we left Afghanistan. While I believe we should bring troops home from all over the world, we should... Uh, we should make it clear to our enemies the consequences of killing Americans are going to be, right? Um, so, uh, so we are we're in a position uh, in which uh, we're in a position in which 
the Islamists are being revitalized primarily by the Afghanistan uh, victory uh, of the Taliban. They're being revitalized by uh, Iran and Iran's victory over the last 10 years over American interests across the Middle East. Uh, you can imagine Iran uh, starting to scheme about a war with Israel where they attack Israel uh, from Lebanon, Syria, from the West Bank, from uh, the Gaza Strip, and with long-range missiles from Iran itself. Uh, that would really challenge the Israelis to, to, to be able to defend themselves. Uh, you know, Iran is going to be emboldened. That Iran being emboldened will only embolden terrorism against the United States. So I see over the last five, ten years, uh, an increase in that terrorism. I, I don't see anybody talking about how to defeat that. I don't see anybody talking about how to stop it. Uh, remember, the Saudis have been funding uh, Islamists in Syria. Uh, again, with the agreement of the Trump administration, Trump basically let the Saudis do whatever the hell they wanted, uh, allowed them a free reign. That cannot be good. Uh, it cannot be good for American interests. The Saudis' interests are not America's interests. Uh, in many respects, the Saudis are still the second largest funder of terrorism in the world. Whether they do it, they don't do it directly, they do it indirectly, but they're still out there. Terrorism has been in decline uh, because ISIS was defeated. It looked like Al-Qaeda was being defeated. Uh, the Taliban was too busy fighting a war against the United States and Afghanistan. Now that they've won, they have got resources, energy prices up. There's more money in the Middle East to fund terrorism. Um, it's going to be interesting, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a spike in terrorism over the next 10 years uh, emanating from the Middle East. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.